Greetings, loyal subjects, and welcome to the first episode of Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. It's Chris of the California Kings, Idaho Jack on Steam here. Now, um, for those of you who did not know, this game, just a couple of days ago, went live as a brand new digital re-release over on GOG.com. Um, up until then, the only way you could get this game is if you had the original disc, which I have. However, on modern systems, um, it's a bit not incredibly difficult to get it running. Not nearly as difficult as, say, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine, but, like, for example, I had it on my computer, and it wouldn't play any of the, like, cinematics, like the CG cinematics. Um, only those were actually being rendered by the game's engine itself. So, I've tested this out, and this already runs a lot better. It's optimized for Windows 7 and 8. It's designed to work on new modern systems. It's only $5.99 on GOG.com, so I figured let's play through it and have some good times. Now, I'm a huge Indiana Jones fanboy, if you couldn't tell from some of the other games that I've played. Along with the fact that I dress up as a treasure hunter. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm writing a treasure hunter book series called Dust McGallan. And that's the name of the adventurer. Oh, yes. This looks beautiful already. So let's see. But, um, yeah, huge Indiana Jones fanboy. So, like, I think that this is... This is fantastic that they're re-releasing this, and it gives me hope that if this is a digital re-release that they're doing, that maybe, just maybe, we could be seeing a digital re-release of hmm. Infernal According Machine map, that is optimized for modern systems. The secret entrance into the lost city. Beyond the city lies the Temple of the Black River Goddess, and inside, the idol of Kuruwatu. I'm close now. Now, see, a um, bit of a history lesson. This was the first, shall we say, major Indiana Jones game released that was not done internally by LucasArts. Even though LucasArts produced the game, this game itself was produced by The Collective, who did the uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer in the early 2000s. We did that one for Xbox. And so this game was actually, like, kind of optimized for what was then modern systems like the Xbox, PlayStation, it was a console game primarily. Not a heavy focus on PC optimization back then. Jackpot. Not with this one anyway. So the controls are simple. It's very similar to the keyboard setup of the 2013 Tomb Raider reboot, in which you control the WASD, and then uh, you control the mouse to move the camera. I'm so excited to actually be playing this a game that probably isn't gonna crash. <laughs> See, but like I was saying, like, the potential of getting an optimized version of fucking Infernal Machine is blissful. And the reason for that is because right now, if you want to play Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine, which was released in 1999? 1999. If you want to do that, you have to do some incredibly I can use complex this to fill up my and canteen. interesting workarounds in order to be able to make that work. Let's see, put that away. Put it away, Indy. Put it away. Put it away. Put it away. Put the. There we go. The T button. So, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. So, after, shall we say, the... Oh, God. Fate of Atlantis was the first major Indiana Jones game to be released that had an original story that didn't rely on a movie that had come before it. So, when that took off, LucasArts then went... Oh. Are, you, are you a trap? Nope. LucasArts then went and began work on Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine, which was the first 3D Indiana Jones adventure, taking influence from Tomb Raider, which had actually been influenced by Indiana Jones originally. Now, something I'd like to point out now... Let me put this guy away here real quick. The combat system is actually really fantastic in this game. So I've got the mouse. When you click the left mouse key, it does his left fist. 
when you do the right, it's his right fist. So combat will be essentially finding ways to um, combine those two into fantastic little combos. And see, like, for example, each weapon is going to have different... Um, different styles like so here's the right here's the left click and then here's the right click so it's like the this this soft and fierce punches yeah I know that made a whole bunch of good sense but let me tell you let me tell you okay this game is just a lot of fun now one of the things. Let's see. Let's just get through. Oh yeah, I gotta fight these Ivory guys. Ivory hunters. These guys are no Boy Scouts. I better watch my back. Now can I? You can... Here we go. Oh. Oh, no, get off, get off! Get off! Oh, shit. Yeah, see, that's one of the downsides to this game is that, yes, the combat system is intricate, and it is, like, it can get really complex really quickly. But the thing with it is that if you get knocked around, you get knocked around pretty damn hard. There he is. There he is. I like that... As, you know, this is one of those few games where you can run up to people and literally just kick them in the stomach while they're down. Because that's how Dr. Jones operates. Like, he's a street fighter. Ah, revolver ammo. Do I have my revolver? Yeah, I do have my revolver. I forget. What button is it? Oh, yeah, it's C. Crosshairs. Okay. Let's put that away for now. There we go. Okay. What do we have here? Oh, yes! So you can pick up um, items in the environment and use them to your advantage. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, well, alright. I was gonna try and shoot. Ah! Oh, no, no! There we go, come on. Let's go beat up some thugs. Get ya? Nope. Oh! Oh, there we go. Got him. So yeah, you can pick up bottles, you can throw them at people, you can pick up the shovel, like I said, like, you, like you've already seen me do. And uh, most things have the whole, like, strong and weak attacks where you can just like swing them around rapidly and you just want to combine attacks into things so that you've got your combinations going on. I sound really smart by saying you get your combinations going on. There we go. Alright, here we are. So now I can wall. E, that's what I thought. There we go, shoot. That took me kind of a minute or two to get that. I remember this part. Ugh. See... I do have some qualms with this game, and I will bring them up later as they arise, but this is honestly, like, my personal favorite is Infernal Machine. I think Infernal Machine is my personal favorite. Mm, is it the best? Well, you know, there are certain limitations due to the nature of the graphics, due to the way that the game plays. I think that um, Infernal Machine has the most unique story. 
Um, as a complete package, I think that Fate of Atlantis is the best Indiana Jones game. But this is the first game in which, combat-wise, you actually felt like Indiana Jones. Um, also in the explorations of the environment. Jumping, uh, whipping, swinging, things of that nature. It's actually really impressive how they managed to nail being Dr. Jones, being able to get around as him, and searching your environments for treasure, fighting the bad guys, using your whip. Where do I gotta go? Oh, and the, the... See, that's not me doing that right there. That's just the camera not, not being able to decide if it wants to go around the, the, uh, the corner or not. Okay. Nope, I wanna go this way. Oh, there's a dude over there. Oh. Ah, uh, okay. I'll take it. Keep an eye out for the American. When Beck wants his head. There he is! Oh, no, 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 no. This ought to even the odds. Oh! <laughs> yes, Indy, yes it did. It absolutely evened the odds. You can get pretty ruthless in the combat in this game. I'm not going to lie. It can get pretty hardcore. Picking up things, throwing them at people, trying to survive. Definitely the best combat system in any Indiana Jones game. Um, I'm not... Ah, like... I genuinely liked the attempt that they made in Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings, which was the Wii game that they came out with. But the motion controls did not do that game justice. Okay. Let's see, where do we want to go? Oh, looks like I found it. Now, when it comes to exploring... There are times when this game gets a little bit obtuse. Then again, I mean, that's kind of the nature of the adventure genre when it comes to video games. Go look at Tomb Raider, go look at Banjo-Kazooie, even Mario 64. Oh, what are you? Oh boy. Dudes. I'm gonna get out my... Wait a minute, you're an ivory hunter. Sweet. Pick things up. Is there a reload button? Yes, there is. R. Alright, let's put the revolver away. Let's move on to the next portion of the level. Now, um, something to remember when you're playing the game is that the game saves at these little intermissions. It doesn't save mid-stream, you can't save mid-level, so you have to be, you know. One of the things about this game is that if you die, you're going to be dying for a minute. Okay, come on. I'm trying to... Oh, yes! <coughs> Nope, 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 nope. Hide. There we go. Let's see, use the camera to our advantage here. Pressing both left and right on the mouse key at the same time goes into a grab. So you can grab dudes and you can pummel them a little bit. Let's see what we can see first. Take the shovel. <coughs> Want to break open boxes as often as you can to see. Daddy is. Oh, 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 bye, buddy. Nice, you're done. You're done for. There he is. Ah. If you hold down the shift key, you can lock on to your target, which depending on how many dudes you're facing, can be a blessing or a curse. No, no! Come on, you did the death animation thing. Yeah! 
Alright! So far, so good! Nothing too complex, nothing too difficult. Just beating up dudes and looking for treasure. This is a great introductory level. Get to learn the ins and outs. Now, if I remember correctly, Doug Lee is doing the voice of Indy in this game. And uh, Doug Lee was the guy who also did the voice of Indy in Fate of Atlantis. No, 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 that's right. Fate of Atlantis was Doug Lee, as was in uh, Infernal Machine. They switched to a different voice actor in this game, as well as Staff of Kings. Uh, I just don't remember their names. Can you tell I'm a bit of an Indiana Jones fanboy? It's one of the few things where I actually go and seek out, like, hardcore, nerdy, geeky information on a subject. I don't do that with a lot of things. Uh, now, Star Trek is one of those. I'll do that for Star Trek and Indiana Jones. For the most part, I'm pretty content to just be peripherally a nerd about something. Now, let's see. Where did that door open? It's up here. Yeah, when I saw the news that this um, had been re-released digitally on GOG.com, I was like, you're fucking kidding me, right? Because this... Oh, what's that? Oh, and that's a machete. I already have a machete. Because this game is a little older, you know, 2003. It's not like, you know, a titanically good game that can't run on modern systems, like, at all. But I'll tell you, the fact that they went and put this and re-released it. That, I think, again, <clears throat> jump and grab the thin ledge ahead of you. Oh, I see. This is uh, one of those little tutorials. Yeah, honestly, if they could find a way to optimize um, Infernal Machine and re-release it for modern systems, that would be fantastic. That would be absolutely fucking fantastic. No, no, no! Okay. Okay. Let's do, let's do a little whip combat. You can pull things out of people's hands with the whip. You make them jump back. Ass! Come on, get away from me. Put the whip away now. Boom, boom, boom. And then tackle you. Oh, hey. No, man. Don't dig that. Okay. Break some boxes. You might be thinking to yourself, Dr. Jones, how do you recover health? Well, there's one of two ways. There's health packs, and there's the trusty canteen, which you saw me refilling earlier. I was kind of talking over it. Pull this out. Press the press the left click. Drink your water. There you go. Now the stone has been weakened here. If I could get my hands on Even some I explosives, I could blast a way through. Oh, there's a dude up there. Okay. Go into first person mode. Shoot this guy, take him out. Gotcha. So I think. Because if you were paying attention. Oh, shoot. Oh. Take that away. Take that. Um, can I get up there to get to. I'm not gonna bother. Here we go. Explosives. Blow myself up. Yeah, try not to blow yourself up, Indy. Bum, 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 bum. Press the E key. Get away from that. Get away from that. And um, any time now. There we go. Sweet. farther to the next intermission. Oh, there's the fight music. There's dudes ahead. You can wall hug while a gun is equipped. Alright, let's... I'm 
let's do this then. guys here. Not gonna... Oh shit, get away from me. Oh, put the gun away. Put the gun away. No, no, no. I'm not gonna put up with getting machetes to the face. Ah, you have a backhand. Oh, Indy. Oh, come on. Oh, this dude up there. There he is. Where are you? Oh. Gotcha. All right. Now let's collect ourselves. I got the machete. Collect some ammo. Reload everything. That is the really nice thing about these fountains that are scattered throughout the levels is that as you refill your canteen, you are simultaneously refilling your health. So you never feel like, oh shit, I'm out of health, let me refill my canteen. Okay, now let me refill my canteen again because I just drank it because I refill. It's very streamlined. These guys definitely knew what they were doing when it came to making this action game. Revolver ammo, good, 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 good. Let's pull out our revolver and make sure that it is reloading. Oh, 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 I'm starting to see it. I'm starting to see paths forming. How'd you get up there somehow? There we go. One of the things that I sometimes forget about with this game is that Indy will automatically climb up onto ledges if it's at the right height. So sometimes it'll be like, oh, I have to jump onto this. Ah, oh, shit to jump onto this, don't I? So like here, oh, that's, that was very unique, Dr. Jones. <laughs> what's funny is that um, before the digital release of this game, I was actually planning on playing this for the King's Channel. And I was like, eh, you know, a bit of an older game. Not exactly working on the best technology. And I was like, ah, I really wanna play it. I think it's a good game. I think it might be fun to play through and Even put it on the channel. The God, and especially after playing dead. through freaking No, no! Don't! Don't! I don't want you to. Especially after playing through freaking Deadfall Adventures. <laughs> Just wanted to play like a decent adventure game, shoot. And this is definitely that. Now I did mention I do have a few qualms with the game, but that's later. That is later. I don't wanna go. I guess we're going down. first. Ooh. Oh, hey! All right. Neat. You can tell which ones are the climbable vines because they just barely pop out from the scenery. The hard part about climbing with the vines, though, is that you want to turn the camera a lot more than you actually can. And it starts to reset the camera as you climb. Okay. Jump! I see the unsteady floor bits there. Oh! Ah, oh, traps. Ow! I didn't time that right, I'm sorry. Okay, bottom one, go, 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 go! No, no, Dr. Jones. Alright. Oh, we'll get up and we'll try it again. Yeah, see, like, I tried jumping, but that's at the right height for him to just, you know, reach up and go, yeah, I'll, just, I'll climb over that. Huh. 
you not going anymore? Okay, it's because I set off this trap. Jump! Okay, perfect. We did it now. Ah, oh, the multi-whip jumps. Yes! Sometimes, there's gonna be a few of those in the game where it's like, getting the timing on those is a pain in the ass. Jesus. Okay. And here we go. We begin to get into the depths of the tomb of Ceylon. Anyways, I'm going to call it here for this episode. Thank you all so very much for watching the first episode of Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. I highly recommend you go get this from GOG.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Like I said, it's only six bucks. And um, if we support this game, if you are a fan of Indiana Jones, um, even if you have the original copy, which I do, this is, again, optimized for Windows 7 and 8. Um, I think that by supporting this and buying it and downloading it, uh, we'll be showing, you know, both... Um, LucasArts and um, whoever holds the rights to it, <laughs> Disney, um, that we definitely want to see a optimized version of Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. And I think that that would be great for the game market. Anyways, like, comment, and subscribe. Check out everything else we got going on, on the channel. And we'll see you in the next episode.